I'm saying if there is no such thing as goodness known as God's nature, then every thought I have about morality is just an opinion because there is no objective mal uh, uh, morality for me to appeal to to see if my opinion lines up with his nature. That's what I'm saying. Morality. Let's talk about it. Objective and subjective morality. This is a message for the atheist, for the Satanist, for the non-believer, for the agnostic, whatever you want to call yourself, whatever title you're giving yourself. If you do not believe in God, if you do not believe his son died for you, this is a message for you tonight. We're going to talk about morality and what that means. Let's get it. <laughs> Hey you, yeah you, watching the content. First of all, let me tell you, I appreciate each and every viewer. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you chose to be here with me. And with that being said, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and become a part of the family. Smash that like button like a contestant on Family Feud trying to get the number one answer. When y'all leave, we still got to use this. And don't forget to turn on the notifications so you don't miss when I drop new content. This helps the channel grow so that we can get into the algorithm and reach a broader audience. The goal here is to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and to encourage believers to study more for themselves to develop a closer relationship and walk with God. Thanks in advance. Now back to the video. It always baffles me to talk to, uh, to people who don't so-called believe in the God that I serve, who don't believe that God exists and always want proof that God exists. One of their biggest arguments that they like to stand on, which baffles me the most, is the foundation of morality. And the problem that I have with them standing on the basis of morality is this. What kind of objective morality is there without God? When you confront an atheist, an agnostic, or a person who does not believe in God with the issue of morality, then they have no leg to stand on because you have to borrow from God in order to justify your argument of using morality. Without God, there is no such thing as objective morality. God provides us a baseline of objective morality. Without objective morality, then everything would be subjective. If you do not know the difference between it, objective is facts, things that can be proven, things that hold true. A steady baseline is what God provides. Without that, everything would be subjective, meaning according to how you feel, what your opinion on things are. So atheists would argue that people have an innate sense of right and wrong. I agree that we do, but it's built in and governed by God. Because without God, why would you get married? You could just sleep with whoever you want to, be with whoever you want to at any time, because why would you get married? Why would you want to settle down? Why wouldn't it be okay if I went around and unalived anybody that I want to? Because I have no morals and morals are subjective to me. Just because you think it's wrong to unalive people, I may think that, hey, that's the best way to survive to unalive people. Who's to say that uh, having an inappropriate relationship with young kids is wrong if there is no baseline, if there is no objective morality I could feel like it's okay to have inappropriate relationships with young kids. Yes, ma'am. What's your name? Katie. Hey, Hi. Katie. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm great. I just had a question about the moral issue where you said that there's things that we inherently know that we already know is right and wrong, which I had kind of two questions about it. First was that you had said previously that God and the Bible, that's what gives us morality, and without that, it's just an opinion. So if we already have these inherent traits, then how can we have no, how can it just be an opinion? We can still, er, sorry. <laughs> no, I see, what, I, th I think I see where you're going, Katie. Let me, let me reframe it. I don't, what I don't mean is, I, I don't mean that um, if I just have a moral sentiment, that it's just my opinion if my moral sentiment corresponds to God's nature. That's not an opinion. I'm saying if there is no such thing as goodness known as God's nature, then every thought I have about morality is just an opinion because there is no objective mal uh, uh, morality for me to appeal to to see if my opinion lines up with his nature. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Does that and make then, sense? Yes. Okay. And um, the second thing, I'm trying to figure out how to word this. I should have like processed this more before I stood up. Take your time. It's um, okay. Basically, sorry. 
you said that there's an inherent set of morals and people without God wouldn't have morals and that is not subjective, but yet throughout history and different cultures, each set of cultures has their different sense of morality. Like, there are cannibals who believe that that's perfectly fine, and there are people who believe in that's, well, I don't believe in cannibalism, so there are people that believe right. cannibalism is wrong, so. Good question. Let's take the cannibal situation for a second. <laughs> because the guy I mentioned earlier, Jay Bujashevsky, I was talking about to Moses, he talks about that in his book. It turns out that people who are cannibals uh, just define people in the other tribe as not human. And then they go through these rituals to try and expunge themselves of the guilt of engaging in cannibalism. They know it's wrong and what they do is they redefine so the other people as not human so then suddenly it becomes right for them. It's the same thing that happened with the Nazis. Hitler could not get his SS to kill Jews without dehumanizing the Jews. He called them uh, subhuman creatures in order to get the Jew or to get his, his uh, SS to actually kill them. Because there, it's such a strong sentiment that you ought not kill innocent human beings. So what do you need to do in order to get people to kill innocent human beings is you just define them as non-human. Yes, I, I understand that dehumanization is right. what makes the murder, but okay. Aside from murder, any other moral issues like LGBT rights, that actually spans through many different churches, how they have different opinions as the time goes on and as the, we go on as a society, things in the Bible change, not in the Bible, our views on how we interpret yes. the Bible change. That's the difference between what we call sociology and morality. Morality, well, let me reverse that, morality is true, right, and wrong. What we think about true, right, and wrong and how we practice uh, morally is what's called sociology. And so we might change our moral practices, but that doesn't necessarily mean that right and wrong changes. If right and wrong changes, there's no way to see if you're ever making any moral progress. If there is no objective reality and everything is subject to how I feel, which is what subjective morality is, then you cannot say that every individual on this planet will feel the same about what was good and what was evil. God gives us a clear and direct path to what is righteous and what is unrighteous. So it always baffles me for the unbeliever to stand on this claim that human beings have an innate sense of what's right and what's wrong. And we've seen throughout history where some men do not think it's wrong to take whatever they, they want to unalive people whenever they feel like it. Heck, we see it every day. And they will say questions like, well, is it right for God to take unalive people to do these sort of things? And if God told you to kill your whole family, would you do it? Um, first of all, let me do my disclaimer here. I'm for God all the way. I'm for God 100%. So whatever my God asked me to do, I'm down to do it. Now, I just don't believe my God is asking me to do any of those things. See, you read the word, but you twist the word. Similar to Dave Koresh uh, in Waco, Texas. Similar to Jim Jones uh, in the in, in the cult that he had, People's Church. You see, just like in the video I just did recently about the Hebrew Israelites, unbelievers don't understand that just because you read from the word doesn't mean that you can't twist the word, you know what I'm saying, that you can't manipulate the word. And so many of these people have been hurt by people who've twisted and manipulated the word. And a lot of unbelievers only don't believe because some of the things in the Bible they don't agree with. It does not fit their lifestyle. And they want to make God in their image. The LGBTQ want to make God in their image. That's why they're coming up with different, different translations and new gospels and new yeah, they're coming up with new ways to talk about God and to fit God into their image. See, if I wanted to, I could try to twist and manipulate God to fit the lifestyle that my flesh wants to live. But one thing I understand is God says what he means and means what he says. God's the same God he was yesterday, today, and forever will be. God is infinite. We are finite. I am not a God. I'm made in his image, but I'm not God. God is God. God is the one who created all of this. The earth is his in the fullness thereof. Thank you, Lord. The earth is his in the fullness thereof. Therefore, he has the final say in my life. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Now, here's the thing about morality. I just told you guys 
that if it wasn't for God, there will be no objective morality. There will be no reason to get married. There will be no uh, reason to have self-restraint, practice self-restraint. This world will be full of the survival of the biggest, fastest, and strongest. That's who would survive in a world with no objective morality. With no objective morality, that's how the world will be. And when God calls us believers, the salt of the earth, if we lose our flavor, we're within the earth shall be flavored, will be salted. If we lose our flavor, no, you would see nothing but mass chaos. We are the light that is in this world. If it wasn't for us, you couldn't eat at no restaurant. If it wasn't for godly people, you would have to worry and look over your shoulder at every turn. If it wasn't for people having a sense of God, who have a relationship with God, this is the total chaos you would be dealing with. Because we are here, you're not dealing with total chaos. You still have people you can trust. You still have people that will pray for you. You still have people who show love. How you know they will be mine? By the love they have for one another. Anytime you see people showing love to each other, anytime you see people forgiving each other, you need to thank God that he still has his people here on earth, that he's still letting this thing rotate one more time. Once again, like I said, answer it in the comments. If you so do, please thank you for joining this channel. I want y'all to get in the comments and let me know what it does objective and subjective mean to you and what would the world look like without an objective baseline, which directly stems from God who governs that law that is written on our hearts that we say that is innately a part of the human DNA. Answer in the comments. I'll be anxious. I try to answer back as much as I can. Thank y'all for supporting the channel. Until next time, y'all be blessed.